All right. Uh, so we had a very uh, informative and interesting conversation there about uh, the school space, uh, which was fun to hear. Um, and I, I found it interesting how uh, there were two things of note. One, we were talking about how to completely overhaul a building. Um, and another, just a small change about renaming the media center. Um, and how big or small those things affect the school climate, the school culture. Uh, and, and speaking more about improving culture and climate is Sue Rouse. Hello. Um, I'm Sue Rouse. I teach eighth grade science at Fairgrounds Middle School. I've also taught seventh grade science and sixth grade science and sixth grade reading and writing at Fairgrounds. So I've been all over the building. And I'm here to talk about climate and culture. So my question is, will setting SMART goals, including an alternative school program, and creating a mentorship cohort for our middle school administrators, will that improve our climate and culture? Yep. <clears throat> so before we can talk about improving it, I wanted to briefly go over what climate and culture are. And according to the Association for Supervision of Curriculum Development, the ASCD, climate refers to the school's effects on students, including teaching practices, diversity, and the relationship of administrators with teachers, parents, and the, our students. And then the culture refers to the way the teachers and other staff members work together and their set of common beliefs and values and the assumptions that we share as buildings and as a district. Um, a positive school climate and culture means greater academic achievement for our students. Mm -hmm. And this just is a visual for you. I like visuals to further break it down. Both matter, but they are different entities. Okay. I have a short video clip. So basically, it was like a one and a half minute video clip about how you can walk into a building and you can feel the, some people call it temperature or the climate or the culture. You can feel what a building feels like. You walk in, you go into the office, you know if it's warm and welcoming, you know if you look around, if the students are happy, if, they're, um, if they feel good about being there. You also know when you walk into a building and it feels really tense and <clears throat> the kids don't look comfortable and it was, that's all that was showing. It was showing somebody walking into a fast food restaurant where they were treated um, like a king and welcomed and spoken to respectfully and politely and then the same chain of fast food restaurants where somebody walked in and the um, workers uh, could care less that the person was there and that they didn't um, they didn't put their Walmart face on they weren't smiling they weren't receptive and that was the video okay so how do we know we have a problem in our district? Well, um, there are a lot of ways we know. Our superintendent at the last board meeting actually said, this is one of the biggest problems in our district right now. Um, also, we had a 2016 and a 2018 survey done by UNH that was a staff survey. Um, our November 2018 discipline data for the district, and at Fairgrounds we did our own 2016 survey on culture and climate. They are all strong indicators that we had a problem. So naturally when you think, I have a problem, sometimes you go to, who's to blame for this problem? And I'm gonna suggest that that's not really the question that we need to ask. We need to ask, how do we move forward? What can we do about this problem? Instead of trying to tease out where it came from, why we've had it. We all know that we've had a tremendous amount of turnover in recent years. 
in administration uh, on the building level and on at central office. I don't think, and that's one of the factors, our changing demographics are a factor. There are a lot of variables that go into it. Um, the things that I looked at are discipline, communication, and community. So looking at the 2018 survey, this, I read it in June when it came out, this question really bothered me. Staff in my school are supported in matters concerning student discipline. 47 to 59 percent of the teachers in, the, in our middle schools felt disagreed with that. That's horrible. It's a horrible statistic. The next one. My school administration responds to student discipline in a timely and thorough manner. 43 to 46% agree that that's not true. It's a very high statistic. Okay. And my school administration provides consistent follow-up support and uh, with student behavior issues. Again, 48 to 54. These aren't acceptable numbers. Okay. So the question is, how do we improve our climate and culture? My suggestion is that we do three things, two of which the district is already working on. Um, we create SMART goals. SMART goals will, um, a SMART goal is a goal where you pick an action that you want to do, you have a plan for implementation, but really the most important part is the accountability. You have a way to track whether or not you've met your goal, whether you need to tweak your goal, or whether you need to continue working on your goal. We've done a lot of PD this year um, based around SMART goals. We spent um, early releases, we spent, I don't know, one of our in-service days working on this. We've had speakers, we've sat in small groups and tried to come up with an action plan. So I think that this is goal is in process, but we have to keep going. And it can't just be on a building per building level, it has to be on, um, it has to be district as well. We need to think about the social emotional learning of our students and staff, mind, body, and heart. And we've heard a lot of talk today about trauma sensitive classrooms, about, um, you know, teachers have to take care of themselves in order to take care of their students. So, what would this look like? Caring relationships, high expectations, meaningful participation. How can we do that? We create classrooms that are trauma sensitive, which we talked about, um, to make room for academic achievement because kids that can't focus on their academics because of all the stuff going on in their lives, we're not setting them up for success. We have to move in this direction. Um, we have to support our staff in a way that we're excited and passionate about our jobs, and I know so many of us are, but I think we could do better as a district. So how can we encourage this in our middle school buildings? Um, I believe that we should create a cohort for our middle school administration for mentoring culture and climate within the district. When we created the mentorship program for teachers, for new teachers, our statistics went from below state standards for teacher retention to well above them. We're now at about 92%. So we have a model in district that's already working. And my suggestion is we take that model and we apply it to this current problem. We have um, to mentor coaches that aren't attached to any of our middle schools and they're not attached to central office. So having them or individuals like them lead a monthly cohort for our administrators means that it would be a safe place where they could discuss their problems. They could have readings. They could do 
run scenarios just like we do at the teacher mentor meetings. Um, I'm a mentor for the district and the meetings are wonderful and I also when I was a new teacher as a new teacher went to the meetings. They were wonderful for me as a new teacher as well. I think though that we need to, um, I know the middle school principals meet, but I think if you have a focus and a facilitator for the meetings that it will keep culture and climate present as the focus and it will give them the opportunity to really do some work that needs being done on the building level. Um, I also want to say that we've had a lot of turnover recently in middle school administration. So I think that um, mentoring our newer administrators would be a, a good thing to do anyways, but also the statistics that I showed earlier of, from the 2018 survey, if we were tested again, our answers might be different because there have been changes. Um, I'm also on the committee to create an alternative school for middle schools students and I believe that this would also help improve the culture and climate for our district. We have students in our district that um, have a high rate of discipline issues and to me what that says is their needs aren't being met. If they're getting in trouble again and again and again and again and again, we're not figuring out what their issues are, we're not addressing their needs. And a lot of these kids, I believe, are those kids that have experienced trauma, that have high A scores, that what we're able to provide in the typical educational se setting is not working for them. And if they're a characteristic of some of those students might be high absenteeism, difficulty forming relationships with students and adults, and depression and anxiety. And if we put them in a smaller school setting where we had a lot of support, we've been talking about having a social worker on site in the school, um, that that would help them. It would also help social workers. Part of their job is to reach out to the families and to help bring community services that are available to students and families up to the forefront. So these kids would get some intensive help and hopefully be able to go back to the typical setting. And we don't have a huge population at each school. Um, for the high seven or over incidents, um, at Fairgrounds, we, in November, had five. Penichuk had six, and Elm Street had 20. And I know that looks very skewed, but Elm Street is just about twice as large as our school. So, you know, the numbers don't really, you'd have to look at percentages to compare apples to apples. Um, the benefits of having a program, those students' social-emotional needs would be addressed. It would also address the needs of the other students in school because if you have seven, five, seven, or 20 kids taking up a lot of your staff's times, the guidance counselors, the team's meeting time discussing students, the psychologist, the administration dealing with discipline issues, that's time they're not focusing on the rest of the kids. Um, also, the, so the resources would be spread out more equitably. Also, teachers are problem solvers, and we don't like to have a, a student that we don't feel we're being successful with. We don't like to look at a kid and think, oh my gosh, you know, I can't help this kid. So I think that it would help the culture of the teaching staff as well to be able to feel like there's a place that will address all of our students' needs. And right now, I know I don't feel that way, and I, I believe many of my colleagues don't either. Oops. So what can we do now? 
Um, I think that we continue to need to work with central office and middle school administration to create more goals to implement them and follow through with them. We need to continue working on the alternative school. I know that the hope was that it was going to begin next fall and that we've put that off a year. And hopefully, um, when we're ready to present it to the board, that we've got a solid school in mind that will help address the needs of all of our kids that need extra help. Um, I also believe that creating a mentor program for uh, middle school administration. We already have personnel in the district that could do it, so it's not going to break the bank because it's a zero cost for the district, and I believe it would help our administration and help each middle school. What I would like to do also is I'd like to resurvey the staff because I do believe we've had so many changes. I think that the data might change and also listening to Tara and Mike thinking about teacher perception versus the student perception I think the, those are that's very interesting and in that we should somehow survey the students as well and um, think about think about that when we write the next survey or the re next survey is written for us thank you <laughs>